ददाते वंदेहम श्रीगुरु श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरो वैष्णवांश श्रीप साक्रजाता सहगना रघुनाता सजीव साइत सवदूत परजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे नमो महावदनियाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रधायते कृष्णाया कृष्ण चैतन्या नामिने गौरतुषे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते सप्तकांचन गौरांगे साधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाचाकलुभ्य कृपा सिंधुप्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैतागदाताीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करो हरे कृष्णा सो वन अगेन वेलकम टू ऑल द डिवोटीज आई होप नाउ रेन साउ सबसाइडेड नाउ द वेदर इज ओके इन मुंबई इट वॉज हेवी रेन इन द पास्ट सो वेलकम टू अवर वीकली स्मृति सत्संग प्रोग्राम सो टूडे will be reading from chapter 18 bhagavad gita conclusion the perfection of renunciation or moksha sanyasa yoga so we'll see as many verses as we can read through we'll read through i thought of discussing uh, three verses uh, maybe later part uh, i think uh, 20 to 30 in between there are three important verses recently we were discussing about that maybe we may end with that we may reach up till then or not but in between we'll stop and then we'll read that those three verses are very important uh, we thought recently we were discussing about them so in any case chapter 18 is very important chapter in the entire bhagavad gita it is kind of summary of the entire bhagavad gita in also 18th chapter talks about the most essential principle of the teachings of lord krishna of course we have chapter 9 chapter 10 which talks about pure devotional service but in addition to that especially while living in this world with what consciousness all of us should live the ideal expected consciousness of a sadhaka while in this material world that this is very important because even though we may be trying to practice bhakti in the midst of so many other worldly responsibilities we have responsibilities in relation to our family we have responsibilities in relation to our occupation we have responsibilities in relation to children friends society community so many things are there but in order to lead a life of sadhaka 
how we have to cope up with all these things how we have to lead all these things how we have to uh, take care of all the additional requirements in our life it with what motive with what approach we need to execute all those things such kind of things are, are touched upon in this uh, chapter 18 especially the first 40 verses talks about all these practical aspects we hear now these people are there we have people talking about art of living so they talk about how to live how to live a life of uh, sane and morality etc etc so but this chapter chapter 18 the first 40 verses talks about the various important aspects that are required for any common man to lead a life of serenity and a life of sanity and life of responsibility life of attention and life of maturity of course various attributes we can give but in general what is expected from a sadhaka while living in this world so that one can go back home back to guarded with complete preparation so not that okay i want to go back to guarded i say how, how when where no no not all these questions even while living in this world we have to lead a proper life while practicing our bhakti sadhana all these things will help us go back come back to guarded in a honorable way so these 40 verses are very essential verses whenever time permits devotee should read again and again again and again again and again hundreds of times of course every chapter is like that only but since it is the last chapter wherein lord krishna teaches about the most important aspects of life in this chapter afterwards starting from 41 to 66 and uh, till the end that is like summary of the entire bhagavad gita whatever has been taught till now everything has been briefly summarized to later part so first uh, 15 verses starting from 41 to 55 gives the summary of first six chapters and last six chapters put together and then from 56 to 63 gives the summary of the middle six chapters and then three verses 64, 65, 66 will give the summary of chapter 9 and chapter 10, which talks about Ananya Bhakti. So, in that way, we have to understand. And later on, Lord Krishna talks about few things. Whom should be spoken? This Bhagavad Gita, whom should not be spoken? And Sanjay also gives his conclusion, his realization after hearing the entire Bhagavad Gita from the conversation between Lord Krishna and Arjuna. So, such kind of things are in the rest of the chapter. But today, we'll touch, touch upon few verses. Maybe we go try to go in sequence. So that is the whole idea. And we will also have some time for a nice discussion. I hope my voice is clear to all the devotees. All of you are able to hear me uh, properly and sound is clear. Yes, yes Prabhuji. It is clear. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, thank you. So we'll begin. In the 18th chapter, Lord Krishna, summarizing all the topics of the Gita, Speaker speaks about the most secret aspect of devotion and surrender within devotion. So basically, the summary and the complete surrender, which is mentioned in the Sarva Dharma, Paritajya, Manmana, Bhavamad Bhakto, etc. Et that is the main thing. But in any case, the first 40 verses are also very important. We cannot uh, dismiss them. So we will be discussing some of the verses from that section today. And what is the connection from chapter, previous chapter to current chapter, 17 to 18? To emphasize the goal of surrender to Lord Krishna, which is the essence of the previous chapters, is taught in the final chapter. <laughs> Hare Krishna, parallel class is going on. Mm, thank you. So now, see, the title Moksha Sanyasa Yoga. Yoga means the process that takes us back home, back to Godhead. And the process of going back to Godhead is called Moksha. Moksha means Muktir Hitva Annata Rupam Sarupena Vivasthiti. That means giving up all the material identities, material upadis, and uh, reinstating ourselves in our Sarupa. That is called Mukti. That is Moksha. Sanyasa means that is attained only by the renunciation. 
by the mentality of sannyasa either physical actual sannyasa or with the mentality of sannyasa when one uh, conducts oneself in this material world one can very respectfully go back home back to godhead attaining moksha so that is the understanding that is being indicated in this chapter so while living in this world while executing so many activities though apparently it may look like we are so attached to performing all these activities all these duties and all the other results of all the activities no problem externally it may appear like that but within the core of the heart one should be like a sanyasi one's mood should be complete detachment then one can easily attain moksha at the time of death and uh, rejoin the supreme lord in his spiritual abode that is yoga that is the essence of this chapter every chapter has got a title the title itself will tell us what this chapter is going to talk about all so that is very important so now lord krishna begins his summary by reiterating his prescription that arjuna should renounce the fruit of work not work itself from the very beginning arjuna's dilemma is this battle is a sinful activity we are going to kill so many warriors and especially we are going to kill our elders who have given us everything who have protected us who have taught us who cared for us who are our teachers uncles friends relatives how can we kill them how can we do that kind of uh, sinful activity so it is better to give up the battle because we are doing this battle for the kingdom i neither want kingdom nor want battle that arjuna ma saying from the very beginning but lord krishna begins his summary by reiterating his prescription that arjuna should renounce the fruit of work not work itself my dear arjuna just do it your duty forget about the result what is going to happen whether it is going to become sinful activity or it is going to cause varna sankara you don't worry you do your duty because that is the need of the hour thus lord krishna reviews that dutiful detached work brings no reaction he also give the solution don't worry if you do as a matter of duty and if you do uh, with proper detachment from the results then your work becomes akarma it will not produce any karmic reactions the 18th chapter speaks of the three types of sanyasa three types of jnana three types of karma and defines liberation and indicates bhakti as the highest secret of all this is another quick summary of what is going to be there in the 18th chapter so here you can see the chapter summary i will not read but you can only read yourself it is a 78 verse chapter so first 12 verses give the summary of our six chapters next uh, six verses talks about the summary of last six chapters 13 to 17 19 to 40 talks about karma how modes control all our activity that we perform basically while living in this world how the modes are influencing us and how we should conduct ourselves 41 to 55 the summary of the yoga ladder the conventional ladder knowledge sakama to nishkama karma yoga freedom from reaction by occupational work and free from reaction free work through jnana yoga to brahman platform and by pure devotion service to liberation so this is a summary of 41 to 55 the summary of chapter 1 to 6 and chapter 13 to 18 and then similarly from 60 to 56 to 63 is the most conventional more conventional knowledge which is summary of chapter 7 to 13 so 7 to 12 then 64 to 66 the most conventional knowledge which is a summary of chapter 9 and 10 which is the sum and substance of entire bhagavad gita the analyzed devotional service ananya bhakti and then 67 to 71 preaching and studying the gita 72 to 73 arjuna is the formally fixed arjuna says yes sir i am ready to do whatever you say kariche vatanam chadu vatanam vachanam tava so my dear lord whatever you say i am here to execute your order and then 74 to 78 sanjaya's prediction and then every chapter of bhagavad gita can be understood with the help of a acronym the acronym that is given to bhagavad gita is smile 
ultimately we are ending bhagavad gita that's why we should be having smile not like that because this is 18th chapter ho gaya bahut mayne se kama ka bahut mayne kar rahe hum bahut din se abhi bhagavad gita khatam ho gaya not like that not that smile this smile is that now we have understood how to live in this world and how to go back home back to god did when you understand these two things should always smile there will be smile always on his face he is our face that smile can be obtained by thoroughly understanding bhagavad gita chapter 18 and also following the instructions of chapter 18 so a stands for summary and the essential principles of karma yoga first 18 verses m stands for how three modes of material nature influence one what all the different things related to us are influenced by three modes our knowledge our action our our self the karta the doer our uh, performance of action our understanding our determination our happiness all these things are influenced by modes of nature kindly note down the last section is happiness we were discussing a uh, couple of days back why lord krishna kept happiness at the end of his discussion after this from 41st onwards it is the summary of the entire bhagavad gita the last three four verses spoken from the teachings of bhagavad gita are happiness why so any thoughts from any devotee any thoughts for many devotees why happiness so you can you repeat the question <laughs> sorry no why lord krishna talking about happiness at the end of bhagavad gita this is the last words from that sense afterwards it is all summary just to kind of overview of the entire bhagavad gita he speaks in the after this but this is the, like last instruction of lord krishna why happiness at the end so probably the characteristic of the soul is to be always happy ananda mayo abhyasat ananda ah. okay soul to happy hai rehne do happy to happy rahega ah so ye material world pe bhi if he, the, these are the instructions mm-hmm. and if it is ending on a happy note i think people can uh, make a effort to implement that in the world okay maybe so but still <laughs> some more some more uh, straight forward answer i'm looking for hari krishna ah yes uh, mataji uh, he he says the uh, means his last sarva dharman paritya cha mamekam sharanam pracha aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishami ma shucha ha so ah. abhay mudra is giving he is telling do not fear that is ah. very important so oh, so what i am not talking about sarva dharma pratyaja i am asking about why lord krishna is talking about happiness at the end of his teachings so probably probably we are all always in the search of happiness that's the reason ah uh, actually we are all searching for happiness lord is telling that what is the key for real happiness what is the key for everlasting happiness we are searching for happiness but because the because of the limitations in our search because of the limitations in our understanding of real happiness we end up getting some so called material happiness in the mode of ignorance or passion but the real happiness one can attain in the mode of goodness and beyond so what is the real happiness and what is the key for real happiness ultimately whatever we do everything is for happiness only na otherwise why would somebody do any activity to become morose or to become miserable real happiness is in surrendering to lord krishna and uh, means when we surrender to his krishna and when we find first, happiness in his first happiness first of all you don't know what is happiness then how will you i mean what what, what do you get how do you understand whether it is happiness or not you we should understand what is the real happiness then we should also understand what is the key for the real happiness okay the real uh, complete surrender is the key for real happiness that is true that i am not saying that is not wrong but you don't have to go all the way till the end of the bhagavad gita just limit stay here only based on this only you speak it hmm. prabhu ji i think uh, real happiness uh, 
it's automatically it comes when we do our duty mm. uh, to the perfection but first of all we should know what any, is real any... happiness also by doing our duties what we are getting we may think it is happiness but it may not be happiness it may be a simply satisfaction only yes ah <laughs> so like that so whatever it is but lord krishna defines the happiness and he also talks about the key for the real happiness not only real happiness the everlasting happiness so something like that uh, of course prabhu ji was still in searching for happiness that is that's where the gita course starts the living entity everyone here all of us are searching for happiness so these are the last instructions of lord krishna and then i stands for ideal worker summary of chapters 1 to 6 and 13 to 18 and then l love of god there is nothing but bhakti so summary of chapter 7 to 12 and then other the sakama bhakti nishkama bhakti and ananya bhakti so their respect to destinations everything is there e end result end result of reading bhagavad gita end result of hearing bhagavad gita end result of teaching bhagavad gita end result of following bhagavad gita all these things palashruti you can say palashruti patashruti and then um, whatever you can think of so like that so this this is like a smile the expansion of the abbreviation smile smile so in that way we can see the whole chapter so please remember this one word so that you can remember the entire 18th chapter what is there in the 18th chapter easily and this acronym is given by is grace sutapa prabhu then but now he is uh, his own as bhakti kesha swami maharaj he was in chopati last uh, couple of weeks back all of you might have seen him and heard him so now let's begin the very first verse arjuna asks a question taking a clue from the previous uh, chapters arjuna is saying that oh my dear lord you stated in the previous chapter uttering the word tat without seeking results sacrifice austerities and charities are performed by those with desire for liberation from the atat material world so chapter 17 at the end there is a discussion about om tat tat the absolute truth the supreme personality of godhead can be addressed by these three words by om by tat and by sat so especially while executing yajna dhana tapa one should perform all these activities huh? as an offering to supreme lord with a desire to attain liberation and while performing this uh, yajna dhana tapa one should be continuously uttering the words om tassat om tassat so this is vedic mantra in yajna dhana tapa yajna vedic mantra are chanted in those man devas mantra should accompany with Om Tassat. Just like we are chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, from the Vedic rituals point of view, chanting Om Tassat is as equal to as chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So from that way we have to take it. So it is basically chanting the Lord's names so that one can attain liberation from this material world. Those with a desire for liberation are sannyasis. So yes, those who are aspiring for moksha, they are known as sannyasis in this world. The practical world, people call them sannyasis because those who take sannyasis, they are they are determined to go back to absolute truth. But there seems to be others who are detached from all the results of their work, as mentioned by you when you said, hmm, "Sarva karma falatyagam tatakuru yatatmavan." This is from the twelfth chapter, text number eleven. Give up all the results of your work with great attention and execute as all your work. as a matter of duty so you spoke about in chapter 17 about those who are desiring to attain liberation they perform yajna dana tapa while chanting lord's transcendental names om tassat to keep things general lord krishna is saying om tassat 
So to keep in a close circle, Lord Krishna would have told Lord's holy names. Hari, Vishnu, Narayana, Rama, Krishna, etc. He might have told. But to keep things, Bhagavad Gita is like the Upanishadic. So the, the Upanishadic terminology is also like that. Om, Tassat, Hari, I mean, not even Hari, but all the words related to Brahman, etc. etc. But they actually indicate Bhagavan only. Hmm. So the same way in the previous chapters, you said talked about uh, Tyaga. So Sarva Karma Fala Tyagam, Tatakuru Yatatvam, perform all the duties, offering all the results to the Supreme Lord without having any attachment to enjoy the results. So I'm confused. What is this Tyaga of those others? And wanting to know the distinction, Arjuna asked a question. Please tell me the uh, renunciation of the sannyasis and the detachment of the grossas who still who performing all the duties but they are renouncing all the results unto the supreme lord are they same are they different if they are same how they are same if they are different how they are different please tell me the renunciation of the sannyasis and please talk about the renunciation of the grossas the first one is called sannyasa second one is called tyaga either both are same or not So one of you can repeat after me. Arjuna Uvacha. Arjuna Uvacha. Sanyasasya Mahabaho. Sanyasasya Mahabaho. Tatvam Ichami Vedutum. Tatvam Ichami Veditum. Yagasya Charushi Kesha. Yagasya Charushi Kesha. Pruta Keshi Nishudana. So here, no, I will, I will, I will explain. No problem. Arjuna is saying that, see, he is addressing the Lord with three names. O Mahabaho, O Rishi Kesha, O Kesha Nishudana. Because this question is a loaded question. This is not an ordinary question. That's why he is addressing Lord with different names, indicating different qualities and attributes of Supreme Lord. O Mighty Armored One. O oh, control of the senses, O oh, killer of Keshi, I desire to know the true meaning of sannyasa and the different meanings of Tyaga. Why? Because, so my, my dear Lord, you are the mighty armed one and you are expecting us to do mighty armed activities. So please tell me with what mood we should perform. With the mood of sannyasa or with the mood of Tyaga? And you are Rushi Kesha. You are the controller of our senses. So please make our senses sober by giving proper answers. And Keshi Nishudana, you are the killer of the demon Keshi. Keshi demon is corresponding to doubts. So this doubt is there in my mind. Please remove the doubt. So like that, Arjuna is putting a loaded question in front of Lord Krishna. Same thing, what I said. If the word Sannyas and Tyaga have different meaning, I desire to know the distinct essence of these two. But if they mean the same thing, in your opinion or others' opinion, I desire to know what is that one meaning as well. If they are same, how they are same. If they are different, how they are different, please tell me. Then the three meanings. Oh, control of the senses. You have made this doubt arise in me since you instigate my, you are the instigator of my intelligence. Oh, Keshi Nishudana, killer of the demon, Keshi. You will kill this doubt of mine just as you killed Keshi. Oh, mighty armored one, since you have become friendly with me, I am asking this. It's so like that. Taking up the former idea first, the Lord explained the different uh, different deviations of two words. So basically, yes, Arjuna asked a loaded question and Lord Krishna has to give fitting answer. So he talks about his own opinion. He talks about others' opinion. He talks about some other's opinion. So because since Arjuna asked about one question multiple multiple ways, so Krishna has to give multiple ways the answer, same answer. So now Lord Krishna responded. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam. Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam. Sanyasam Kavayo Viduhu. Sanyasam Kavayo Viduhu. Sarva karma falatyagam. Sarva karma falatyagam. 
ಪ್ರಾಹುಸ್ತ್ಯಾಗಂ ವಿಚಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರಾಹುಸ್ತ್ಯಾಗಂ ವಿಚಕ್ಷಣ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಧರ್ಮ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫೋರ್ ವರ್ಣಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ಫೋರ್ ಆಶ್ರಮಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥ ವಾಣಪಸ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ಓಕೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ಸರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗುರುಕುಲ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥ ಸರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಒಲ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಕೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಒಲ್ಲಿ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಸಾಧನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಜ್ಞಾನಯೋಗ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರ ಬಟ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಟೆನ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟ್ ದರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ಅಟೆನ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ದೇ ಟೇಕ್ ವಾಣಪ್ರಸ್ತ ಆರ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಆಶ್ರಮ ಸೊ ವೈಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವಾಣಪ್ರಸ್ತ ಆರ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ so what kind of renunciation they display they exhibit and even the grahasas with an intention to go back to godhead while they perform activities what kind of renunciation they exhibit if the renunciation exhibited by sanyasis and also the grahasas are the same or different the grahasas renunciation is called tyaga the vanaprastha and sanyasis renunciation is called sanyasa so this is the distinction so lord krishna first defines them what do you mean by sanyasa of sanyasis what do you mean by the tyaga of the grahasthas kamyanam karmanam nyasam sanyasam kavayo vidu the intellectuals the knowledgeable people say that kamyanam karmanam nasam giving up all kamya karmas is called sanyasa there are three kinds of karmas that are there that we perform ನಿತ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ನೈಮಿತಿಕ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಕಾಮ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಎರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಬಾತ್ ವೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಕ್ಲೋತ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ತಿಲಕ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸಾಧನ ಮಂಗಳಾರತಿ ಜಪ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದೆನ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಫೀಸ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ and getting all the grocery vegetables taking care of the family members spending time with parents relatives friends taking care of them taking care of the guests uh, and uh, visiting holy places visiting guests so like this uh, we have so many worldly duties these are daily duties they are called nitya karmas every day we have to do and that actually includes from bhagavad gita point of view the daily duties in duties include yajna dana tapa that are being performed on daily basis in addition to argya etc etc okay and then kamya karmas means if the yajna dana tapa are performed especially for fulfilling some desire they performing was some wow some brata nowadays in uh, south india we see many people who accept mandala diksha some accept mandala diksha for ayappa some for lord shiva some for lord anuman some for lord ram some for durga and nowadays some for shirdi sai baba also they do and like that even in maharashtra we can see varkaris do it for our uh, lord vithala during that ashadi month they do all these things and um, it's like that there are so and shravanamas if you see bombay uh, shravanamas every family does shravanamas generally the such kind of things are done in order to fulfill some of their desires they pray to the lord my dear lord i'll perform this vrata this vow please do this for me expecting something in return so like that some austerity some vrata some yagna some charity like that one do that kind of karmas are called kamya karmas and then naimitya karmas naimitya karmas are periodical duties should be performed should not be given up they they are not they are not like kamya karmas they are like nitya karmas only but they are not there every day they are there only once in a while like uh, currently the pitrupaksha is going on pitrupaksha is naimitya karma naimitya karma means at regular interval we need to perform once in every year so they cannot be avoided they should be performed 
so that kind of kamya karmas are that they, they are called naimit karmas so like that so kamya nam karmanam nyasam sanyasam kavayo vidu here yeah, lord krishna is telling that my dear arjuna giving up all the kamya karmas is called sanyasa householders in addition to performing nitya karmas perform so many kamya karmas in the modern context kamya karmas means fixed deposits mutual funds purchasing shares hmm? purchasing properties purchasing vehicles these are all called kamya karmas kamya karmas are basically performed for future security or for more uh, worldly opulences for more luxuries more happiness such kind of things they are all called kamya karmas so in order to fulfill that kamya karmas one will take up extra efforts for daily maintenance one performs some effort for fulfilling this additional desires one has to perform extra effort so that's kind of active for kamya karmas and especially daily duties need to be performed they cannot we cannot be avoided so even whether sanyasi i have to get up early in the morning take bath wear fresh clothes apply tilak and do morning sandhya vandana afternoon sandhya vandana evening sandhya vandana and do morning japa even sanyasi also to do even even if one become sanyasi also one cannot avoid daily duties maybe the family responsibilities office responsibility may not be required but for sanyasi his office responsibility is begging and also teaching whatever he knows he should teach others these are his occupation just like a grocer goes to office and uses all his intellectual abilities to do something and get salary same way a sanyasi speaks krishna katha and gets bhiksha he is giving something and getting something grocers are giving something and getting salary some return so both are same so the details may vary but the intention and purpose is same for one's livelihood maintenance but kamya karmas hare krishna one should be careful so sanyasa means giving away all the kamya karmas daily duties they should perform but one should perform no more kamya karmas that is called sanyasa vana prasada and sanyasa order the sadhaka should not perform any kamya karmas but a gurasa can perform kamya karmas in addition to nitya naimiti karmas now a grahastha while performing nitya karmas kamya karmas and also naimiti karmas how one should conduct oneself that is that is mentioned in the next line sarva karma phala tyagam prahus tyagam vichakshana the vichakshana the highly intelligent people say that tyagam means sarva karma phala tyagam one should perform all the duties just as a matter of duty i am the parent i need to take care of my children i need to provide them good education and good uh, other uh, facilities in terms of maintaining them but not forcing the children that you should get seat in iit you should jee you should top jee you should get seat here you should get job in us you should marry this girl that girl not like um, uh, insisting on you should follow you should listen to me you should not like that one should do whatever one is supposed to do as a matter of duty the results one should not be hankering for results one should not be attached to the results that does not mean that one should not expect the results results can come one should anticipate that best results should come but one should not anticipate to get the fruit of the results it's like the parents give good education to children good facilities for the good education for the children but if the students get good uh, result then the parents should not say that yeah it's all i have done it's all by my mercy my son god is like this i have done all i given all these facilities all the, this that are not like that here yeah do one has done the duty and one should not speak about the duty that i have done and then one should not claim that i i am i supposed to receive the recognition that the newspaper should write that the son of so and so parents have topped je so one is looking for that kind of name and fame 
that is not called tyaga and just giving some example i am not pinpointing to anybody so sorry for that i am just giving one example which which is uh, very much uh, gen in general which is seen in andhra pradesh people look up the parents always look after that my, our name should come that my son has achieved so and so so our name should come in the newspaper our name should be uh kept on the holdings here and there etc etc our name and our photos so they should we should be recognized i mean now uh, people should recognize us such kind of anticipation is there in the parents not like that one should do one's duty and then that's all no aspiration to enjoy the results of one's duties such kind of thing is called thyaga it's like that so this whoever has this kind of thyaga how why would they perform kama karmas a sannyasi has to officially renounce the kama karmas but if a grahastha had to carry this kind this kind of mood obviously such a person will never perform kama karmas so how how kama karmas are being performed only with the intention to enjoy the fruits of one's activities but if a grahastha in order to go back home back to garden need to conduct himself by as per this verse sarva karma phala tyagam then how can he ask for uh, how can he exude kama karmas in one sense one may be officially wearing the sanyasi clothes and officially wearing the sanyasi danda whatever mood is following the same mood should be followed by a grahastha also if he is supposed to be called as a tyagi this is the highest uh, uh ideal conduct lord krishna is expecting especially for those if one wants to go back home back to godhead if one is in grahastha ashram one should be like this if one is in vanaprastha sanyasa ashram one should be like the first line this is how one has to conduct while living this world if at all one has a desire to go back home back to godhead so like this every verse has got a loaded meaning so now the lord then described the opinion of sankhya philosophers about thyaga in the first verse lord krishna gave his own opinion and now in the upcoming verses he will give the opinion of others how other people uh, will talk about sanyasa and thyaga what is their opinion and uh, first tyajyam joshavad itiye ke ಫಾಲ್ಟಿ who are saying like this yeah the sankhya philosopher say that all activities described in the scripture because of being defective by inclusion of violence or other bad qualities should be given up completely sankhya followers means sanyasis those who are aspirants of liberation those who are already entered into vanaprastha sanyasa they say that dekho by without proper understanding i have entered into gross ashram performed all those activities but every activity has got a lot of fault every activity can bind us in this material world see if at all you want to attain liberation never ever enter into gross ashram perform any activity just live a life of renounced order this is sankhya philosopher thought process they will never ever encourage one to enter into gross ashram because they say that grahastha ashram baba lot of problems lot of difficulties and lot of trouble and ultimately one will be bound in this material world if at all you want to attain liberation better never ever perform and never ever enter into grahastha ashram to perform any activities and they say that because yajna dana tapa have lot lot of faults even though you want to perform them properly you can't perform the material world will put you in such a case you end up performing something sankhya say like that and then 
Mimamsakas. The poor of Mimamsakas say that, Hare, Hare, how can you give that up? You cannot, you should not give up. Yajna, Dana, Katapa activities cannot be given up because they are prescribed by the scriptures. Scriptures are telling that one should practice all these things. How can you give up? What happened to the Sankets? They have gone mad or what? Shastra is telling you cannot say no to Shastra. What's this? You should not give up. Mimamsaka say you should not give up. Sanket say you should give up. That is what happened. Brahma told Kumara, same idea, Kumaras, four Kumaras, get married and beget children and increase the population. Kumara said, no way, my dear father, we are not getting married, we are not getting into household activities. Because these household activities, even though how perfectly we may perform, there is some problem, they will bind us, we don't want to get into. And they continue to stay as Naishtika Brahmacharis as small kids only. They are an example of Sankhya, Sankhya's. Because as a result of that, they became the teachers of Sankhya. They are teaching Sankhya Yoga and Jnana Yoga and Ashtanga Yoga to one and all. It's like that. So two different people look at things in two different ways. Both of them are not wrong. Both of them are correct. Yes. Shastra is prescribing for someone who need to perform again on the path. The household activity is very important. The same Shastra also says that one who is not interested in performing, uh, not interested in entering household order and performing all these things, stay away from all those things. Just practice your Sankhya Yoga as a Vanaprasa Sannasi and live, lead your life. No problem. Both the statements are there in Shastra. It is not that this statement is there in Shastra, this is not there. Both are there. Both are required. But which statement is suitable for which person, one should carefully understand about one's own nature and follow that statement. One cannot accept one of the two superficially. With thorough examination of one's own mentality, one should accept and follow one of the two injunctions. Like that. And then, in the next verse, then Lord states his own opinion, that is Sankhya's and Mimamsakal opinion, and next to Lord Krishna also says his own opinion. Nishayam Shrunu Me Tatra. Nishayam Shrunu Me Tatra. Tyage Bharata Sattama. Tyage Bharata Sattama. Tyago hi Purusha Vyagra. Tyago hi Purusha Vyagra. Trividam Samprakir Tita. Trividha Samprakrit. So, Lord Krishna says that, hear about my conclusion, my understanding. Okay? There are three types of Tyaga. In one sense, both Sanya, the mood of Sanya and the mood of Tyaga are same. They are not different. But, people in this world are influenced by three modes. As a result of that, we can see three types of Sanyasa or three types of Tyaga. Now, Lord Krishna is going to talk about these three types of sannyasa and three types of chaga. So now, Lord Krishna says, Yajna dana tapa karma. Yajna dana tapa karma. Natyajyam karya mevatat. Nata Natyajam Karya Mevata Yagnyo Danam Tapaschaiva Yagyo Danam Tapaschaiva Pamana Ni Manishina Pavana Ni Manishina So Lord Krishna is trying to reconcile the mentality of Sankets and the mentality of Mimamskas. The Sankets are telling that there are so many problems. What is the biggest problem? When you do yajna, dana, tapa, they will offer you the results. Because you have undertaken so much trouble to perform these duties, you want to enjoy the fruits. That is human nature. When we do something, we want to enjoy the results. That is human nature. That is the biggest problem. The desire to enjoy the results of one's own activity, the biggest problem, keeping that in mind. Better don't perform the duty only. Then what to speak of the desire in the desiring to enjoy the results? Like that Sankhya say, no duties. Forget it, all these things. Just take renunciation and study Shastra and analyze and go back to 
absolute truth. Lord Krishna says, not like that, Baba. This world also has to run. If everyone renounces, what will happen to this world? How Who will maintain the person who has renounced? The renounced person also has to come to uh, Grastha for begging, for a livelihood. If everyone becomes renounced, if there are no grosses, will they sustain? No, no, grosses should be there. Grosses are there, grosses should perform gross activities, including Agni Dhanatapa. But they should perform with great caution, with great precaution. And that is mentioned. Because if one performs all these duties with great precaution, one is obviously becomes as qualified as sannyasi to attain liberation. But at the same time, even though one is not cautious, even though one is not selfless, one is want to enjoy the results, but still by the mere fact that if one performs Yajna Tapa, that performance itself will slowly purify the consciousness of the Sakama mentality of the performer. That is also there. One should First of all, one should not have Sakama mentality, even if it is there, but while doing this Ajna Dana Tapa selflessly, one's Sakama mentality will vaporize, will go away. That's why, Lord, according to Lord Krishna, he says that we should do it. But with what mentality? One should do Ajna Dana Tapa and all other household activities with the mentality like that of a sannyasi. Just as a matter of duty, one should perform. So that is mentioned in the sixth verse. Yajna Dhana Tapa must be done because they purify the consciousness. In this verse, the Lord shows the method by which these actions become purifying. How? By performing in what way Yajna Dhana Tapa can purify a person who is performing Yajna Dhana Tapa. See, all of us, whether some of us may be brahmacharis, most of us may be Grastas, some of us may leading a life like that of Ivana Prasar Sanati, whatever it is in any case. The most of the activity that we perform in our daily life can be part of this Ajna Dana Tapa only, these three only. In addition to our daily uh, activities. So now you are telling we should not give up, we should perform. And you should perform without in reserve to enjoy the fruits. If I have to perform and I should not enjoy the fruits, why should I perform? That question might come in the heart of any person. And that is answered in the sixth verse. First of all, how to perform all our activities, including Ajnidana Tapa, and why to perform all our duties? Because you are telling us to perform and not to have a desire to enjoy the fruits. Then why should I perform at all? If you are telling me to go to office and work Monday to, I mean, first to 31st and you are then you are telling that no salary, then why should I perform? Unnecessarily slogging myself, wasting my time and energy? One may say. Now Lord Krishna says, why and how one should perform? First line talks about how, second line talks about why. Yetani apitu karmani Etani apitu karmani Sangam tekva falani cha Sangam tekva falani cha Karta vyaniti me partha Karta vyaniti me partha Nichitam matamuttamam Nichitam matamuttamam In the first line, Lord Krishna talks about how we should perform our activities. In the second line, Lord Krishna tells about why we should perform our activities. Etani apitu karmani sangam tektva falani cha. My dear Arjuna, you should perform all your duties, the prescribed duties according to your varna and ashrama. Apitu karva karmani. How? Sangam tektva. Without being attached to the doership mentality. We should do all the duties and should never ever say that I am doing all these duties. Okay. Matlab kya? Yes. Matlab? You should do all the duties but never have the concept that I am the doer. Sangam tektva. 
Don't be identifying yourself with the duty that you perform. You should do the duties, but never ever claim that, never ever say that I have done these duties. And then next one, palam tektva. And never ever have a desire to enjoy the fruits of your duties. Two things. You are telling me to perform the duties, but never ever say that you I am the doer. I have done these duties. And never ever have a desire to enjoy the fruits. Obviously, one should have one question. Why at all I should perform these duties? When I am not supposed to say that I am the doing the duty, when I am not supposed to enjoy the fruits of the act my fruits of my activities, then why should I perform my duty? Lord Krishna says, Kartavya Natime Partha. Because it is your Kartavya. You have been born and brought up in a particular family. And since day one after your birth, your parents have given training in a particular field. Therefore, because you have received so much, you have to reciprocate accordingly by executing the duties. In that way, you are removing all your debts that one accumulates in this world. One is clearing all one's debts by performing all one's duties as a matter of kartavya, as a matter of duty. Without saying that I am the doer, without saying that I am the enjoyer. This is, Lord Krishna says, Nishitam Matam Uttamam. This is my best resolution. This is my best understanding. This is my best conviction. That's what Lord Krishna says. This is how one should perform the duties. This is why one should perform the duty. So like that. Of course, as you go further, there are many more things that will come across. Okay? I think this is the last verse that we, we discussed for today. Maybe eighth verse also we can just touch upon. But in any case, so those who perform one's duties in this mentality is sure to go back home back to Godhead. If at all one wants to go back home back to Godhead, one should perform all one's duties in this mentality. Otherwise, Hare Krishna, no hope. Okay, the next question. Now the Lord speaks of the three types of saga he promised previously in three verses. Lord first describes the tamasic saga, the saga in the mode of ignorance. Niyatasya tu sanyasa. Niyatasya tu sanyasa. Karmano no papadyate. Karmano no papadyate. Mohatasya parityagas. Mohatasya parityagas. Tamasa parikirtita. Tamasa parikirtita. So now, here, how people in Tamaguna execute their activities is indicated. But Lord Krishna says one should not do duties like that. This is not a pro bona fide and appro approved way. It is not recommended to give up the Nitya Karmas even for the Sannyasi. Rejection arising from the ignorance of the scriptures ends in ignorance only. Niyatasya su Sannyasa Karmano no Papadyate even the sannyasis should not give up their daily duties. Then what to speak of a grossa giving up the daily duties? Not at all good. If at all one gives up the daily duties one is supposed to perform because of imperfect knowledge from Shastra that simply produces or increases one's ignorance. The sannyasi can reject the karma karma since they are the obligate, they are not obligatory. But nitya karmas are not to be rejected, they are obligation, obligatory duties for everyone. The result of such tamasic saga is ignorance instead of attainment of knowledge, which was the very goal in rejecting the nitya karma. See, why would the sannyasi, a person become sannyasi? Why would a person want to get into anaprasa sannyasa order? Because their desire to go back home, back to God is very strong. 
one want to develop detachment from this material world that's why one is taking into vanaprasar sanyas order to cultivate the renunciation as a result of that one can go back home back to godhead without any difficulty if at all one is not able to cultivate renunciation in the gross order one should forcefully cultivate the renunciation in the vanaprasar sanyas order but the best is if one cultivates renunciation in the gross order itself that is the best then one can very easily go back home back to godhead why one will not cultivate renunciation that uh, at the gross order the reason is one does not know the scripture one is ignorant of scripture why one should follow these things that knowledge is not there that's why one gives up so lord krishna says that though we have three karmas nitya karmas kamya karmas and also naimiti karmas one should give up the kamya karmas completely because they lead to bondage kamya karmas directly bind us in this material world because kamya karma is performed to enjoy the results in enjoying the results means it binds us in this material world but not the nitya and naimiti karmas such as the five daily sacrifices whether one is grahastha whether one is vanaprastha or sanyasi one should not give up the nitya and naimiti karmas especially for grahasas there are five daily sacrifices pancha maha yagnas they should not be given up what are the pancha maha yagnas offering to the rishis studying the vedic literatures and teaching the vedic literature to next generation and applying the vedic literatures in teaching the vedic literatures in our daily life studying bhagavad gita studying bhagavatam should not be given up they should be performed every day nityam bhagavata sevaya and then deva runa deva yagna that is worshiping the devatas of course we are not worshiping all the devatas but we are worshiping lord krishna worshiping lord krishna is including the worship of all the devatas so in that way we are worshiping all the devatas should not be given up and pitri yagna offering tarpana to the pitrus the pitri yagna is called naimitika karma rishi yagna deva yagna is anta karma pitri yagna currently pitri paksha is going on offering tarpana is a naimitika karma a grahastha should not be giving up naimitika karma and then finally nru yagna bhuta yagna nru means the human beings all the human beings we are getting something from all the human beings so in reciprocation whenever there is a possibility whenever they come home come to our home we should feed them nice food offering food to the people in general our relatives and all the other living entities is called nru yagna and bhuta yagna 1 2 3 4 5 the nru also includes our relatives nru means in general all the human beings these five yagna should be performed regularly without fail studying the scriptures worshiping the devatas and the supreme lord offering oblations to the four fathers and taking care of the people and all other lower species living entities not that isha vasam consciousness is there na not taking their uh, quota instead offering them whatever their quota offering them food when they are in need when they are guest at our home so like that so this is the way what should conduct oneself and this is the way what should not conduct oneself so like that a clear cut instructions are given by lord krishna in the 18th chapter so that we can mold in our life in such a way that we are readily prepared to go back home back to godhead so like that thank you very much we will stop here we are already very late i just want to touch upon couple of things so anyway the three verses we will discuss some other time whenever we get another opportunity that time the other three verses which i promised we will discuss them elaborately so today we will stop here so geeta mata ji was telling that uh, you can touch upon that uh, pitru paksha is going on and all but i just i because this this verse has got this note so i came all the way here pitru tarpana is in naimitika karma so it is a occasional duty it is not daily duty it is done only once in a year as long as one is a grahastha one should not give up this naimitika karma one should perform this but for what purpose and what consciousness one should do and one should not say that i am the doer and one should not think that i am i will be the enjoyer of these karmas 
then why one should do one should do as a matter of one's duty because we have received so much for our ancestors our forefathers we should express our gratitude our thanks to them on this particular day on this particular paksha so especially tomorrow is that pitru amavasya so many people will be doing etc so thank you very much with these few words i'll stop here though it is uh, time up but still we'll take couple of questions this is like general topic some devotees might be having anyway we don't have any prasadam now online only so we'll take some 5 minutes to take some couple of questions yes any devotees have any questions based on what we discussed till now no questions so nothing you have understood it seems krishna hari krishna prabhu ji oh. dandavat pranam ha ah, dandavat pranam uh, prabhu ji i wanted to know regarding this pitru paksha hmm. there is a difference between tarpan and shraddha see ultimately technically every thing is called as bali an offering offering means you are offering to something to somebody without expecting anything in return so sanskrit we have multiple words they may have uh, different meanings also the tarpana shraddha it is same thing offer to forefathers only but the yearly what we offer can be called as shraddha and uh, what is being offered uh, in some special occasions is called as tarpana so according to time the name might change but ultimately the intention is same the activity is same so okay. this much only i know exact details you can ask some priest who are dealing with this uh, shraddha rites etc okay thank you prabhu ji ha ah, rex Krishna. Oh, so, probably I had one question. Thanks, Guru. Yeah. So, you many times, na, means uh, these days, people say that instead of doing shraddh or a paksha, hmm. I would rather do some philanthropic activities in the name of the person who has passed away. What so, kind of activities? Like they'll do some donation to the old age home. Hmm. They'll do some donation, uh, like uh, 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 hmm. some uh, some charity work. Okay. So they said that this and this is the same. Mm. So how do you explain this? Like, well, Since... what I understood is that this is our um, duty, and mm. we should do it. Mm. So, okay. so how do we answer this? Simple. See, we 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 just read na one one. So what is this? The Mimamsaka say that yagna dana tapa should be performed because they are prescribed by the scriptures. the shastra will tell what to do and how to do if shastra is telling that in the name of our forefathers you offer give some, you you do offer some food or some donation to poor people or some anath ashram or some uh, orphans or some old age homes yes if it is stated in the shastra you do no problem whatever shastra says we should do accordingly that is expected that is a way if you do then it is said that you have done it if you do on our own uh, deciding something okay i will do this like this so that is then that is not according to shastra that can become like a pious activity that can be like a dana that can be a charity that cannot become a shraddha right or pitu tarpana that will remain as a dana offering food to orphan old age and other things food or another article that becomes dana but that will never become tarpana if it is not prescribed in shastra in that way yeah. thank you prabhu thank you here yeah. hare krishna so how it is supposed to be done what shastra says so since we may not know many things but we can ask the priest who does these things regularly they will explain everything in detail and they will also tell everything why should be why they should be done in such a way so there is a elaborate procedure given in the shastra 
so it is better to follow that so in addition to that whatever else one want to do let them do no problem give you charity give food to the poor people no problem that is also okay but if you do only that that remains as dana that cannot be called as tarpana also also prabhu ji in the shrimad bhagavatam i don't remember the canto at this moment mm -hmm. uh, there was the mention that if somebody passes away on the ekadashi day mm -hmm. so shraddha should not be done on the ekadashi day yes if the shraddha is done on the ekadashi day it is mm -hmm. not correct for the person who is doing or the mm -hmm. person who has uh, left his body mm -hmm. so it should not be done on the ekadashi day because the pitrus or ancestors should not be offered non grain meals because this tarpana activity includes offering of grains and ekadashi day we are not supposed to offer grains that's why the suggestion is better perform on dwadashi no problem one day delay hoga chalega but one should offer grains okay that is the, that is the only reason <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. Hare Krishna. Ah, yes. uh, Prabhuji, actually, my father passed away on uh, Ekadashi. Mm. So, when we had told uh, the Brahmana mm. that uh, you are not supposed to do the Tarpan because all those vidis had to be done during that time only. Mm. But later on, the next year onwards, mm. so he said, No, no, you have to because they are smartas. Mm. So, what he said for Vaishnavas, you have to follow the way you said. Mm. but for martas we don't uh, they don't follow the way which you said on ekadashi day itself we do the shrad that's what ah, he told me is, even now also ekadashi day we don't eat any grains but yeah. others, the brahmana sandal they eat chapati they eat yeah yeah uh, they eat uh, uh, rava upma yes yes they don't eat rice dal but they eat all other grains yeah in a like breakfast item they eat in the afternoon so they think mm. that ekadashi is alpaharam so for them that is okay because since we are following this vaishnava culture so according to vaishnava culture and ekadashi we, we should not eat and we should not offer to our forefathers the na grains but in tarpana grains should be offered that's why it is recommended to do on the next day okay thank you hari krishna prabhu ji ah yes prabhu ji sometimes it is practically not possible to uh, do all the shraddha ceremonies first year we do but mm -hmm. afterwards it is not possible mm -hmm. and krishna uh, has told that sarva dharman parityaj so uh -huh. uh, how to understand that okay now i have one simple question why it is not possible because of what reason because one is busy yeah busy by what carrying out our daily duties or ah that is a problem lord krishna says if 24 by 7 you are engaged in bhakti shravanam kirtanam smaranam then you don't have any time to do all these uh, varnashrama duties then no problem i'll take care not while doing varna uh, varnashrama duties you don't have any time not like that okay then if we are not able to perform that day then we should not take anything from our parents Mm -hmm. whatever our parents have given us give them back don't take and then you live only by what you have done what you have gained by your own and then don't offer no problem our parents have given us education our parents yeah. have fed us from day one till 25 30 years by the time you got job our job itself by their mercy only huh? and we don't have time to do something for them there are two reasons one can give up one is either one is engaged in bhakti 24 by 7 or one is not using anything given by parents okay okay prabhu ji you, you are getting the gravity yeah yeah understood understood And prabhu ji how busy how for how much busy busy for what this is only once in a year maybe hardly to take 2 3 hours time that much time we can't spare mm -hmm. Sir, yeah, what correct, 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 correct. in comparison to what we have received and what we are giving back is nowhere comparable. True, true. Nowhere, nowhere. This is uh, one netto that is one crore times. So we are asked to do small things. In any case, not only in tarpana but in many all other things. Even nowadays, now it has become passion that ah, who will take care of the parents and all. 
right parents when we were infant they did not sleep they did not eat they have given up their ambitions especially for mata ji they have to be with the baby for one full year they can't go to even if the nowadays mata is also working they have to take leave for one year they have to be with the baby afterwards also they have to give so much time so much energy and at the end when the children become youth the parents become old ah uh, i think it is better you stay in the old age home we are busy working we don't have time to spend with you we cannot attend to you or we, we have a lot of money we kept we keep a servant so it things have become like that so if we remember what they have done for us if we are grateful we would like to serve them in any respect taking care of them or any all the way up to offering to other rights this is nothing but expression of our gratitude for what we have received from them from them i don't know this is my thought process i may be right or wrong and i think like that very true prabhu ji very true प्रभु जी वन मोर क्वेश्चन जैसे अभी जीवी में uh, अपने इधर uh, ये कल के लिए अगर कुछ डोनेशन देना है एंड दे विल परफॉर्म द यज्ञ इज दैट ओके इफ वी आई डोंट वी हैव टू बी प्रेजेंट ना माता जी हां या वी हैव टू बी प्रेजेंट वेदर डूइंग इट इज नॉट लाइक गिविंग डोनेशन नो नो या दिस इज नॉट लाइक गिविंग डोनेशन it is a vidhi vidhi has to be performed the way it is expected to be performed that will be good jitna ho sakta hai utna karna chahiye yeah thank you prabhu ji correct other devotees anyone hare krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam ha ah, dandavat pranam uh prabhu ji my question is that sometimes when we are explaining the entire process of shraddh to people mm. so uh, you know there are been questions uh, uh, that they are asking is what if that person is already taken birth somewhere else mm. then how does it matter whether we have to like why then why should we perform ha ah, okay he has taken birth somewhere uh, and give him all his wealth why are you using ah. उनका वेल्थ हम क्यों यूज कर रहे हैं वो उनका है उनका कमाई है उनको दे दो एंड आपका जीवन अब जीरो एंड आप पर्सन करने की जरूरत नहीं इट्स नॉट अबाउट वेयर ही इज इट्स ऑल अबाउट ओके ओके प्रभु जी आर वी विलिंग टू एक्सप्रेस आवर ग्रैटिट्यूड प्रभु जी एक्चुअली आई वाज एक्सप्लेनिंग द आई वाज एक्सप्लेनिंग द एंटायर प्रोसेस ऑफ श्राद्ध इन माय फैमिली बिकॉज़ i married in a jain family prabhu ji so they don't understand the concept of shraddh mm-hmm. so i was explaining all this to my son also mm-hmm. so he was asking me this questions because out of curiosity or what because he wanted mm-hmm. to be completely satisfied mm-hmm. that why he is performing this uh, shraddh so for me to make him understand i didn't have a reply on that so i so just wanted to ask you process, and a couple of other people have also asked uh, more than the process we should understand the purpose for which we are applying what we are perform we are supposed to perform this it's see our okay. parents our ancestor could be at multiple level not that all of them are payas all of them are sinful they could be mixed also so in all cases whatever it is where okay. they are is not the matter if at all wherever they are how you want to help them so shastra talks about from uh, we'll discuss about all other possibilities and then from bhakti point of view also we'll discuss so normal from varnashrama dharma point of view hmm. in the past people always have the desire to go to heaven either swarga loka or pitru loka for that they need to do payas yagna hmm. dana pa in a payas way they would give charity they would perform yagnas and all that they would go through a lot of austerities and all If a person assumed that a person has led a pious life, performing his daily duties, everything properly, he left his body and went to swarga mm-hmm. or pitruloka wherever. According to his karma, he went there. But the son and the children next generation, when they perform annual shraddha on their name, we are making them to stay one more year in the heaven or pitruloka. Oh. 
Yes, yes, Prabhuji. It's a good thing. Yeah. That is a Prabhuji. Prabhuji, mm. we offer you, that Mahaprasad to them through the crow only. Na? We can do that only through crow. Na? We offer it to the crow. First, we yes. offer it to again, Lord uh, and again, then offer it to... Again, crow thing is also some Ramayana under there. Yes. We can offer it to the crow or we can offer it to the water. You can offer it to the fire. There are different ways, different people, different places, different customs are being uh, followed. The crow thing, Yamara says that if somebody is with me in my loka, they will, uh, if they offer, if you offer to crow, they, it will reach them. But in any case, crow also we can offer, we can offer to Agni, we can offer to water, all these different uh, means are there. We can offer to their photo. Okay. Prabhuji, we also, we also offer, we also offer it to the cow, Prabhuji. No. Not to the cow. I don't think we offer cow it to cow. This prasad cow. should not, not be offered to the not, cow. Not cow. Not cow. Not cow. We should offer either to the agni or uh, to water. Or, not cow. And before that, offer to, the, offer to them means to the photo and then to the crow. Yeah. Hmm. We do that. Not to cow. Okay, Prabhupada. Hmm. also, can the, can the ladies perform the shardha ceremony? See, I don't know, but generally according no. to custom, see, after marriage, the lady belongs to in-law home. Yeah. Okay. So, because what do you, how do you call in your mother tongue the marriage? What is the term used for marriage in your uh, mother tongue? Lagna. Okay. Other one. Other names. There are many more names. Kanyadan. Ah. Kanyadan. Kanyadan. And one more name is there. Pani Granam. Um. Okay. Kanyadan from the girl's point of view. Pani Granam is from the boy's point of view. Okay. What do you mean by Kanyadan? You are given away. Ah. Kanya ko dhan me de re. So dhan me de me ah. that Kanya belongs to the property of the one who received it. Yes. Hare Krishna. So in that way, they, if a girl, 
for her parents because after marriage she does not belong to this family she belongs to the other family the in laws family so in that way she will not have from shastra point of view generally she will not have any rights to perform shraddha for her parents but in some emergency cases when there is no one to perform shraddha rights from from the father's side father does not have a brother father does not have a son fathers does not have a nephew matlab brothers sons and all in no one is available who can do then the girl along with her husband can do okay or she can get it done through the help of a brahmana this is what i heard i understood okay. yeah shraddha can be performed in many ways prabhu ji hai na there are so many things uh, so many ways there are two three ways and the priests have Uh, also told that okay if you want to do it this way you do otherwise you can do like this mm. otherwise you can do it the other way they have two three ways of doing it yeah if the right two, person is there if the mm. son is there then with the havan mm. he has the right mm. the, to do it mm. if for example if they don't have anybody mm. then that lady can do it with the help of the priest mm. yes that's what i'm saying that actually it means the priest give that the darba priest. na that darba mm. Uh, that uh, darba what so is the, under, the understanding is that darba grass a brahmana can do for anyone in this entire universe so yeah acha the help of a brahmana it will be done okay so no problem generally generally our uh, i mean our grandparents used to say that if you are only daughters and no son in the family then the daughter's son can perform it for his grandparents Yeah, ah, that's all. If if only yeah. if there is no one, there is no one who can do. It is like emergency. Okay. All right. Prabhu ji, even if they have someone, but mm. if they are not ready to perform, they don't believe in that. Then the daughters can do. Mm. Daughters will do with the help of a brahmana. Brahmana only. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Prabhu ji. Yes. So, any other devotees have any question? Otherwise, we'll stop here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joining us today. So, yes, it's nine twenty. So we'll stop here. Grandara Shri Mad Bhagwati Gita ki jai Shri Prabhupad ki jai Anta Kauti Vaishnav Bhaktavan ki jai. रिकॉर्डिंग Okay, thank you, so, Prabhuji. Next week also we'll continue this one. We have next week also online only, Prabhuji. Okay, thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabh